Good morning. This is Tuesday, June 30th, almost through the month. And today's uh, title for the devotion is Do It Now. This is Matthew 5, 25. Agree with your adversary quickly. In this verse, Jesus Christ laid down a very important principle by saying, Do what you know you must do now. Do it quickly. If you don't, an inevitable process will begin to work till you have paid the last penny. That's in Matthew 5, 26. You'll pay the last penny in pain, in agony, and distress. God's laws are unchangeable, and there is no escape from them. The teachings of Jesus always penetrate right to the heart of our being, as they must. And I, and I pray that always takes place in our lives, that the teaching of Jesus Christ through God's Word always penetrates right to the heart of our being. That's what stirs us. That's the convicting power to change and get stronger in the Lord. Wanting to make sure that my adversary gives me all my rights is a natural thing. But Jesus says that it is a matter of inescapable and eternal importance to me that I pay my adversary what I owe him. From our Lord's standpoint, it doesn't matter whether I am cheated or not. But what does matter is that I don't cheat someone else. Am I insisting on having my own rights, or am I paying what I owe from Jesus Christ's standpoint? Do it quickly. Bring yourself to judgment now. In moral and spiritual matters, you must act immediately. If you don't, the inevitable, relentless process will begin to work. What he's saying there, if we know there's something that we need to surrender to God, we need to do it now. Do it right now. Surrender to God. If we don't, it's going to continue to erode away at our spirits. God is determined to have his child as pure, clean, and white as the driven snow. And as long as there is disobedience in any point of his teaching, he will allow his spirit to use whatever process it may take to bring us into obedience. Again, what a praise. He will use whatever process it takes to bring us into obedience. And I hear people fight against that all the time. And I tell them, well, stop saying you're a child of God. Stop being a child of God. Walk away. Then you won't have this Holy Spirit working on you to make you a better child of God. If you're that upset at the conviction of the Holy Spirit changing and growing and improving us, then stop saying you're a child of God. A little hyperbole. Hope you never do that. The fact that we insist on proving that we are right is almost always a clear indication that we have some point of disobedience in our life. No wonder the Spirit of God so strongly urges us to stay steadfastly in the light, walk always in the light. He's saying that if we walk steadfastly in the light, the light will always reveal these things, and the faster we see them, the faster we can release them. And one of the things I wrote down here is that there's a driving need in our world today for people to be right. In every circumstance, they want to be right. And they can be absolutely 100% wrong according to the Word of God, yet they want to be proven right. And they'll go any distance to prove that what they're doing, how they're living, even if it's sin in God's eyes, is right. Oswald is teaching us to obey the Lord and surrender our need to be right. And through that, perhaps we'll be an example to the world around us. Jesus continues, agree with your adversary quickly. Have you suddenly reached a certain place in your relationship with someone, only to find that you have anger in your heart? Confess it quickly. Make it right before God. Be reconciled to that person and do it now. That's a challenge, I know, because the world promotes uh, our rights all the time. Everything, everybody has a right to do whatever they want to do. And that's not how it is. If we can surrender our right and wash feet in the name of the Lord, we're going to grow and be examples of Christ to everybody. So the challenge today is, can we surrender our need to be right? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the illustration that Christ gave us in washing feet. And, and he was perfect, Lord. It said that when he died, he was found without guile in his mouth, meaning that he had no sin. And yet, Lord, he did not push to be right, even though he was. So, Father, I pray today that we would surrender our need to be right 
as we walk and live and work in a world that's constantly pushing their rights to be right, may we humbly surrender to you and give you permission, Lord, to use us in any way you see fit. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you guys. See you tomorrow.